what's happening. It's Wednesday. It feels like we should drink wine, doesn't it? It's Design Sips. I'm Sandra Funk from House of Funk, and you are watching Design Sips. Cheers! Cheers! This might be a two-bottle Design Sips. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers! Oh yeah, that's what we needed on hump day. Yeah. We got the gorgeous Josh Chardonnay. We should do this more often. Yeah. All right. We have lots to talk about. Yeah, totally. Before we jump into today's topic, though, um, should we just like update everyone on like what's been going on at House of Funk? We were just saying, it feels like it's been forever since we've designed it. Um, just been busy, busy, busy. So I don't know with what. Rania? What yeah. <laughs> we are just busy working. Um, we. Um, do you want to tell them about your um, exciting launch coming up in spring 2020? Yes. So if you haven't heard me shouting from the rooftops already, please keep an eye out for in the interior design standard lovingly known as IDS internally. Um, launching April 2020, we are bringing you all of the nitty gritty background inside scoop details on how we run our interior design firm for efficiency and profitability and frankly joy. Awesome. Cheers. Cheers to that. Um, oh. Leslie says hello. Hi Leslie. Hello. Miss you. Miss you. What's up? Are you flying in? <laughs> um, yeah, and then we... Um, we so have, we've been working on IDS a ton, yeah, basically, ton. is what we're getting at. So, um, yeah. Thank you to all of our beta testers yes. who reached out. So excited for your submissions. Yes, thank you for those of you who submitted to beta test with us. And um, extra special thank you. <laughs> It's all good. Uh, extra special thank you to those four of you, you know who you are, who have agreed to do it with us all the way. So it is going to be intensive. We are going to be giving you a ton of information and we are so excited to hear what you think about all of what's going on. Yeah. So cool. So Melky has joined. Hi, Hi Melky. JNS designer flooring. Hi, Hi JNS, our favorite flooring rug beautiful carpet people. Thank you, yeah. thank you, thank you. Lots of fun stuff coming down soon oh with some gosh, of our so favorite exciting. brands. Yes. Um, so yeah. Yes, yeah, so we were just filming some JNS installations this morning, so keep your eye out. You'll be seeing kind of a full before, during, selections process, installation process, after with JNS. So thank you, our favorite rug people. Yeah, and then um, before we dig in, let's just remind everyone that they can always, um, we're gonna be updating our trade tab soon with like fall events. We've got what's new, what's next. High Point Market will be doing a bunch of panels. Yep, so keep an eye out. Um, we are gonna be out and about in fall. Um, you know what we do, we share the love. We're, we bear it all, we'll tell you exactly how it is. We'd love to see every designer in our industry run a better, more efficient, more profitable, more joyful business and have the whole industry um, rise up. So that's the goal. That's the plan. Yep. Cheers. Cheers. All right. So we'll keep you guys posted. All right. So. Okay. Um, today, Sandra, we are talking HR and we said we're going to keep this like heavy topic, lightweight and fun, but informative. Yep. Um, I think a great way to start this off is like, I love even just now you were saying, um, bringing joy to the corporate culture. So talk to me a little bit about like how you set your corporate culture and how you come to work every day is what your firm will model. Yes. You know? So we were, <laughs> we were talking about this earlier in the week, preparing for design sips and also our IDS uh, module on HR. And I think the comment that I will share with you now um, was, listen, I had ID IBS from <laughs> a job I didn't like. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. We gotta get. Let's see if any of our viewers would like to. Um... <laughs> Give me a no. <laughs> so no, but just basically saying like, this is my happy place. It, I fight for it to to continue to become a happy place or to be a happy place. Um, I have worked in jobs that were not filled with joy. Um, <laughs> literally made me sick to my stomach, and I don't want it to be like that here. So I'm I'm a very like mama bear about like making sure that the tone is up and that the energy is up and that people walk into this office, make eye contact, say hello, how was your night, how was your weekend, like it. That's how I want to be greeted when I walk in, and that's how I want to greet the people that I work with. So, yeah. you know, we have tough stuff. We have tough, you know, we have times when we have to like have true heart to hearts, and there's it's business. You know, sometimes it's tough 
things happen. Um, there's an ebb and flow and things change and it's real, um, but I just, I just want it to feel good when you're doing it. Yeah, and I think you're a great example of like you can be professional but still have joy and kindness and thoughtfulness and it's a good reminder to people that those aren't mutually exclusive. Like, yeah, and no gastrointestinal issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> slips is going to take us. You just don't. Um, you don't all right. So like one of our big, and for everyone watching, feel free to comment your questions. This is really when Sandra is here to, literally yes. to answer any and everything. I'm your captive audience with wine. So yeah. I will answer your questions. Um, so a big speaking point, Sandra, for HR for us is like outsourcing what you procrastinate. Talk mm -hmm. to me about like that thing on your list that just you move, you hold off on. Yes. So I, you, you know, I, I'm an obsessed Asana person, so you can see that I am spending a lot of time, like all my thoughts go into Asana, and they might, they might be floating around a little bit, and then there's a time when I kind of go in there and clean it all up and figure it out, and it's very obvious to me what I go after and work on first, and what sits and kind of hangs out on my list and keeps getting reassigned to tomorrow and mm -hmm. tomorrow and tomorrow. So you want to take those things that you keep reassigning and re or pushing out a day and, and think about is there someone on the team who could do this better, more efficiently? Is there someone on the team that this would be something they'd be fine to jump in on? They wouldn't, they, you know, it would be totally in their wheelhouse or it would just be like, oh yeah, done, like no big deal. They just, there's someone who just kind of works through those things, no big deal. Um, if it's finances because you don't, you know, it's not your wheelhouse, you're not really comfortable with it, or if it's little menial tasks, if it's um, that just take up so much time and aren't moving anything forward, if it's scheduling, you know, whatever it is that gives you like the eh, that is what you should be looking to outsource. And it's important to um, know that your team should be comprised of people that balance you and, you know, maybe they don't love the exact same thing. Like, I, you know, as much as I operate like a CEO now and it's more an editor and not a design, you know, I'm not in on the nitty gritty to start with. I'm more of an editor on the top line, on the PR, on the every word that leaves yeah. the place, on every design that comes out of here. That doesn't mean that I don't love the design still. It's just you have to be careful with where you spend your time. So, like, I'm protective of my design time, that I really still want to have a daily touch base with both designers on staff, and I want to be involved in the content creation from just a high-level strategic meeting. But I don't care if I, like, I, someone else can handle scheduling. Somebody else can handle, um, scheduling. Just somebody else handles scheduling. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand it. <laughs> like, I'll have a girlfriend reach out about grabbing a cup of coffee, and I'm like, can somebody else get a <laughs> calendar I can't do it um, it just looks so overwhelming to me the minute I open it I get like overwhelmed and shut down yeah, but totally. like look look inside where do you where do you shut down and and see if you can find somebody who doesn't that doesn't bother them yeah. at all and it's totally fine absolutely hi Lisa Colbert who just joined hello to everyone who's jumping in we're talking HR today comment your questions we got a question okay mm -hmm. um, Sarah Lynn Brennan asks, Hello, Sarah Lynn. How do you write up a new employee contract? And maybe like what that process looked like for you, outsourcing. Sure. Yes. So, um, a new employee contract. So, again, you know my philosophy, right? Do it once, document it, do it right, and then repeat it forever and ever. So, um, I can't remember the last time I wrote up a new employee contract because we're just working off the last one, working off the last one, refining, making it better, etc. Um, we have a template. Yeah, we have a template for everything. For everything. Um, so we, it's really important to outline not only the terms and conditions of, with which you'll work, but also your corporate culture. We dive really deeply into that in our HR handbook, um, where it, it's really important to set out some of the things that you're looking for in the beginning instead of saying them in reaction to some behavior that you don't love. So what I mean by that is, um, I love to encourage my people to take vacation, to express themselves with their clothes, to talk to me about anything that's going on, to work a little early and leave a little early when they need to, whatever that is. Like, again, I want this to be a happy place for me and for everyone who works here. 
Um, and the only way they're going to greet me with a smile is if their life is good. And so I want to make their life good. Um, but there are, you know, things in place that make sense, like letting me know as soon as you can and as far in advance as possible about your vacation days. Simple. And who you should email so that it can be properly recorded in ADP and in our vacation time tracker. Off, vacation yeah. tracker, thank you. Um, so just simple things like that. Uh, dress code, we want everyone to be self-expressive. We want to be as loose and as great as we can be while still being professional. So while we want to encourage self-expression and not put constraints on that, like a dirty t-shirt and raggedy sweatpants would never fly. But you can wear just about anything else. If it looks pulled together, I'm not really going to get on anyone's case about skirt length or strap detail. You know, like, yeah. we're looking for self-expression. We're just looking for something that says, I put effort in and I care. Yeah. More than specific. So, totally. like, it's those setting those things up in the beginning, though, because it's a lot harder to have that conversation with someone on the team that says, you're not dressed professionally. You know, that's like, you have to, right? Yeah. You, you have to. But it's, you'd rather reference a document that was already set out. Set expectations in the very beginning. It's a lot easier for everyone to know where they're supposed to be going. Yeah. Um, and so Ashley just joined. Hi, Ashley. You're here in spirit with us, girl. Cheers, baby. Cheers. Um, but I think, Sarah Lynn, your question is a great um, segue to the next point, which is like having an HR handbook in place. And Sandra talked to us mm -hmm. about how we have one that it really has like clear sections about like jury duty policy, things that that your come state up. that come up that real. and how we have them sign and read it. Mm -hmm. So we, I mean, we really went out and, and sought out Ashley, Leslie, some of the people um, that are head of all things finance and also more of a strategic consultant for my firm. The people that help me when I say, can you just check, like, I want to be in compliance and reference the laws in my state and I also want to um, implement best practices. So we did a ton of research. You know, it's not a quick thing. It's something that we went and looked at the legal, we looked at best practices, we looked at some great examples that were available online, but put a ton of effort and research together to come up with that um, employee kind of handbook and agreement that we put together. And again, IDS will include all of that because the whole thing with IDS is it's the whole thing. So it's it's all those years of research, it's all that time we spent on, we've done this for trades, we've done this for employees, we've done this for clients, you know, it's all those deep resources that is what the game yeah. is going to be. So for everyone who's new and joining the conversation, you can always hop on to hasafunk.com slash trade to jump on the list and that's where you'll stay up to date on all things IDS. Exactly. exactly. Um, um, Nancy from Prim Designs. Hi, Hi Nancy. Hello, and hello. so did um, Michaela. Hi, Michaela. Hi, Michaela. We miss you. We miss you guys. Um, okay, so then, um, hold on, sorry. Okay, um, did you talk about how not only do they read the employee handbook, but like we have acknowledgement form that we then yes. file, and so yes, if there so are any not, issues later, correct? There's... It's not just a handbook that you know no one reads and blah blah blah. A, we always try to keep the tone light and fun and easy to read. B, there is a signature page where we acknowledge that they have read and are in, and are openly complying with the requirements set out. So. Um, it's not only something that's in some file somewhere deep in the Google. It's it's something that we really try to we put it together with intention. Um, we put it together specific to our culture and what we wanted it to be. And it was also something that was important as a process to say what our culture was going to be and go through that. I think that's really interesting too to lay out how you want your firm to look and how you want your business to feel when you walk into it. Yeah, y'all know I'm big on the feels. Um, so I, tell me the story. I love this story of how we hired two new staffers within like a week or two of each other and they were just rolling. These two. Yeah. Right here. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. 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 All right. So, um, she's happy. Mm -hmm. Now I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> so we had second bottle lead. So we had, um, two new designers starting, uh, within a couple of weeks of each other. And I'm not kidding, they were obviously skilled and um, experienced and knew their way around design, but they were able to drop into the corporate culture and the systems, because there's a lot of systems in place here, really seamlessly. Like They were literally up and running autonomously and totally inside of the design jobs that they dropped into within two weeks. And that's all based on 
the our templates of onboarding new employees so it's all systematized so we know that when we have a new employee they're going to do step a b c d e f and it's like the the agreement the alarm the, code yeah the alarm code the gmail the asana logins the studio logins the that yeah. hr handbook sign off it is meeting the team, it's being shown around, it's understanding parking, it's understanding, you know, yes, you can totally take an hour for lunch, we definitely encourage it, we know your work is going to be better if you do it, but Sandra never takes an hour for lunch, so you're going to see, again, we all model our, you have to walk the walk, right, so you're going to see me never, I always eat at my desk, but that's because I always also am like running around like a chicken with my head cut off, like, but every single day I'm like go go outside it's beautiful out leave the leave the space so it's I've reiterated that a million times because I don't model that one well and I know that <laughs> but um, I try to do all the other things you know where you walk the walk and you talk yeah. the talk. So. so we have a question um, where do you even begin flooring office policies where did you start well, Why don't we take the overwhelm out of Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like well, okay, so unfortunately in the very beginning, you start in reaction to things that go wrong, right? So mm -hmm. if you don't set out to set up your corporate um, culture or your HR policy from the beginning intentionally, you end up putting it together as a reaction, right? Yeah. And that's the truth. Um, you have something that goes wrong, you have issues that you're dealing with, you have someone who... Um, pushed some, some flexibility that you offer too far and you end up having to, you have, end up wishing you had put together that structure in the beginning and that you, you wish that you had said your expectations more clearly in the beginning. So um, that's my whole story though. Yeah. Like I, I wish this not to happen to you. Yeah. For you, I want you to be able to find a mentor, find a program, find a way to not have to go through every one of those learning experiences separately and on your own and rather that's part of what we're trying to do here. Well, we're trying Leslie, to have that yeah, conversation. Leslie says it best. The answer is IDS and it is. <laughs> it really is. Totally. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the plan is yeah. that like while I can sit here and tell you what you should do and how I did it and da 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 like I can't read you that every bit of my, I mean, how long is our HR? Yeah, it's, it's pretty chunky. It's yeah. small. So like um, I can't yeah. read that to you all nor can I like I don't know, post it on the internet yeah. for everyone to get access to. So we're putting this whole thing together into the interior design standard so that we can really say like, catapult yourself forward. Like you're going to have the, um, the knowledge and the experience and the language of someone 10 to 20 years further along in their career than you. Yeah. At the snap of your fingers. Yeah. But I love, I mean, it does really tap back to something that I think you do so well, which is you either decide I'm going to spend a lot of time researching and putting it together, or I'm going to outsource because it's just in an arena that is like outside of my skill set and remind, you know, empowering a lot of the designers to absolutely to non consultants or freelancers. Absolutely. And interns. whenever we've identified a place where we know we need to grow, that's where we end up with strategic partners, business coaches, mentors, allies, or we do the deep research with our own strategic team and our lawyer and we go after it and it becomes a sub project of something that we're working on, which is what we've done with all of these things. Um, they didn't come together like accidentally over time. They came together with like, okay, we really need to get the lawyer in place and get the strategy team in place. If that's Leslie, Ashley, Rania, me, Sarah, yeah. like we're the think tank that sort of has put this together and or go out and purchase, you know, a copy of a contract. Like 10 years ago, I went out and bought a copy of contracts. Now, at the end of the day, I ended up totally think tanking and writing my own and solving a lot of the issues that weren't solved in the contract um, on my own and with my own deep research and truly a lot of the times it's going outside of our industry for examples that are serving us better. I think there's this like the way it's done is not, we don't have to do it that way. We're all in our own businesses and we can do it however we want. Um, another, yeah, absolutely. Another question just came in. I think it's good and sort of multifaceted. Um, do you handle HR or is it better to hire someone to handle it? I think mm. there's layers of that. There is, there are layers of that. So I lean on my team to handle the day in day out, right? So like keeping the vacation tracker updated, um, 
interviewing the first, you know, doing the first multiple rounds of interviews is on the team. Um, but then when there's a sticky situation or a tough moment that needs to happen, it always has to come to me. I don't know if you've heard me say this before, but in a small business, the shit rolls uphill. Yeah. It's, it's anti-gravity. Um, and this isn't been a potty talk kind of <laughs> Sorry. But, you know, the real, the real eh, stuff has got to be done by the principal, right? If that's client-facing, vendor-facing, yeah. uh, employee-facing. Um, there's no one that can step into that role appropriately other than yourself as the owner of the firm. Yeah. And when you get to that level that you have a head yeah. director of HR, have at it. Yeah, totally. Totally yeah. remove yourself from but that But even situation. you as the owner know when, if there's certain situations that would dictate yes. you leaning on the next layer too, but yes. it always comes to you. Yeah, well. and it's a gut feel yeah. too, where it's, you know, there's, there's times when I'm like, would it be softer if the nudge came from somewhere else or does it just need to come out of my mouth? And yeah. it's, there's, you know, we go through at a different, it's looking at each situation. Yeah. Um, so this is sort of like kind of t um, on that topic, but like, I think an important HR thing is documenting issues every single time. And I know that's a tough topic, but it's, can we talk about how important it is to have those written records? Yes. So it, you, you never think when something starts that it might become bigger later or it might um, morph into something where you might need documentation but from a client who gets a little fired up on a phone call to I don't know some you know some issue of hostility within the office um, it you don't realize that it would have behooved you to document that until much later when your lawyer's asking, do you have documentation of that? Yeah. <laughs> so as silly as it may sound, or as paranoid as it may sound, um, sending yourself a simple email that you then file away that says on Tuesday, so-and-so got really heated on the phone, lost their temper, da-da-da-da-da. Right. This y XYZ phone call, these people were present, here's yeah. the date, file it away. Not the worst idea. Yeah, absolutely. So we do a daily log, which is excruciatingly annoying and painful and everyone hates it. But let me tell you, it helps me pinpoint that day that that happened, that this happened, that that happened. Like it is really, um, it's, it's the way that we document. Yeah, it's like a time stamp. It's a There's time, a time stamp, stamp of what went on in our yeah. firm because again, we, we don't charge hourly anymore, so we thank God, don't get into the situation of people saying, well, how could it have taken that long? Or mm -hmm. how could it have added up to this much where we used to have to go back into those records and prove our time usage all the time? Um, that's when it started, doing the daily logs, but it's still very, very helpful from the standpoint of, you know, I've gone back to a client and said to them, like, this, these are the entries of work that's been done on your project, and this overwhelming amount of data and again it's painful to do it every day but it is really 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 helpful if you ever need to show just how much effort goes into interior design yeah um, a question at what stage do you get involved in the hiring onboarding process hmm. so I always want to get to know someone before they join our team and I can tell you with real sincerity that that could be a quick handshake and a hello because I have a very keen like gut feeling about someone or it could be multiple interviews and checking every single reference if I can't seem to get a read on it. Um, it just depends. And then, um, but really right at the end, after multiple people in the firm have met the person and have said like we have 100% go in our opinion on this person and then I'll get involved. Um, so I, that's wonderful. What was the rest of it? Um, just like when you get involved. So maybe it's more like if part of the onboarding is like setting them up in Gmail and with an alarm code, oh. you're not necessarily involved in those logistics, yes. but you know at the end of the Asana, like it's all been done because you're following in a way. Yes. Yes. You know. So, right. The onboarding system is very like, again, it's so systematized and it's, we have this amazing team in place, Ronnie and Sarah, who just like warmly welcome our new employees and really show them the ropes and yeah I'm not involved in that at all um, <laughs> uh, it just happens I like brought some strawberries yeah. and some yeah. chocolate yeah. happy first day I don't know <laughs> 
Um, How about you know me? I'm there for a yeah. glass of wine. Glass. Cheers. Totally. Cheers. Cheers. Um, so Liz Hack Interiors has a Hi. good question. She says, what does that daily log look like? Do you use a certain program or format? Great idea. Yes. So daily logs are in Asana. And it's a recurring daily reminder that pops up in your asanas. And it basically, it's sorted by um, topic or by client. So we use client codes. So for instance, the daily log might look like admin. PR. PR. You know, HR if we're in that phase. Um, KST, JST, ZGA, you know, those are a couple client codes. And underneath it, really high level, in bullets, nothing crazy, would be like sourced fabrics for the dining room, living room, foyer, um, followed up on all open orders, communicated updates and schedule. You know, boom, next thing. PR might be confirmed speaking engagements at high point, uh, followed up with the PR team, external PR team on next steps, and wrote a first draft on a blog post. Yeah. You know, so, right? Yeah, like, yeah, like high level stuff. Very for sure. quick bullets. I'm not trying to kill anybody here, yeah. but it is so helpful yeah. to have that detail. And we recently restructured it so that the Asana has like to do today and then completed today. Yes. And you kind of like start your day under the to do category and then by the end of day move. Right. And, you know, we, it tends to be, I think it's, it can be like to do today, completed, and then like next cut, up, right? So, cut, like, the yeah. idea is. Whatever you set out to do today, you cut the part you completed to complete it and the part that you didn't complete to upcoming, right? Like, that, yeah. there's, that it just keeps going, that it just keeps transitioning into your... Because we have Asana and we all have these massive to-do lists because we template everything. So it, it kind of says, like, and today I'm going to do this. And it's a little bit under that principle of, like, the three things that are the most important to get done today. And, like just really being focused on what you want to accomplish and then accomplishing them. And then it comes to me so that I can jump in and be like, listen, let's, you know, because it's everyone to reprioritize. Yes, like, let's reprioritize. Let's, you know what, let's, let's put this on hold and I want to jump in on this like with two feet and just bang it out and get it done and then shift back to this longer list yeah. of things. So I know that for focus, the less I can be like task, 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 and the more I can be like project, um, the more I get done. Yeah. So trying to think project wise and not task wise. Yeah. Um, a, another good question. Any tips for good team building? How do you get your employees to go from coworkers to a work family? <laughs> well, obviously, part of the answer. Where did that go? Need that. Need that. So, well, is it time to open the second bottle? I mean, I'm. <laughs> when is it not? Yeah. When is it not really? Hand it over. So, okay. You do you. You find the thing that you love to do with your employees. Trust falls. <laughs> Ropes course. Hikes. Not a Trust falls. Yeah. Strategy building. Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, I, this is such a great question. And I think like it is. you, like some of the things we do in our firm specifically, we have team outing days where we'll like go to showrooms, yes. like have lunch. So we, you know, thank God our, our industry is so fun, right? We all, interior designers out there, we get invited to, you know, house tours and showroom parties and launches and all kinds of stuff. You know, so many business um, development topics and everything else. Come here, class, yes. people. Um, and what's great is when the schedule allows and or when we block it out far enough in advance, which is really the key, because the schedule will never just be like, oh, we're bored today yeah. with a staff of seven. That would be stupid. Um, we try to make time to go into the city, out to a show house, wherever we're going, whatever we're doing together. We can't always do it, but I think once a quarter, <laughs> as you keep pouring, bartender sandwich. Yeah. 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 This, that, this is awesome. Yeah, this is team building, team building right live, wow. in case you were wondering. Um, I save yeah. some for myself. Yeah. Okay, so um, oh, yeah. so those those activities are really fun. We've also done, I think, one of the best ones. We did this offsite in Michigan, where we literally flew to Michigan. My sister picked us up. She's part of our strategic team, and we went off to this cottage in the middle of the winter and built a big old fire and ate a bunch of delicious, healthy food. Except for that time we went to the beer garden. Yeah, and had a serious like three four days of like togetherness yeah. and let me tell you sarah harris didn't let us do anything but work the entire time she had plans for every car ride totally. every car ride had to every minute every minute was 
brainstorming. Love you, Sarah. <laughs> we really do. <laughs> Don't forget that. our uh, romantic end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was. But like we try when we do events, we try to bring the whole team, and it makes it kind of two birds at once down. Yeah. But I think what's important yeah. again is tapping back to that first point of like you set your corporate culture. If that's it, and check us out and we will be follow along. We'll be fierce. We're considering getting scarves and hats. <laughs> looking, <laughs> looking for a merch recommendation. Merch. We, we are, are a vendor are. and want to supply our House of Funk merch. Like we're thinking you know, like is it water shop. bottles? Is it ball caps? <laughs> like in that social style? Is it like Hermes scarves? Sarah yeah. Harris is notorious for tying a napkin around her yeah. necklace to high point. Oh so, I need merch. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's it's so important to get outside of the office and to get to know people. We're going to do a bonfire night come hell or high water. We yeah. tried at the end of last yeah. season and we got rained out a million times. Um, but just getting together outside of work to get to know each other outside of work yeah. is so important too. And then again, I've done speaking engagements where I was traveling for a speaking engagement and I've got a room with double occupancy with two queen beds. So why doesn't a team member come along for the price of a simple flight? And you know, again, we place a lot of orders on our credit card. So we've got miles stacked up. Right? If you've got mm -hmm. the volume of business like this, where for miles, not even the price of a flight, I was able to bring a team member with me who was able to do social media throughout the whole thing and also just get to know that one team member really well. No extra skin <laughs> off our back. What is happening? No, there's a lot of smiling just going you've gotten to know your team member. Oh, it was well. a very romantic oh, very event romantic with Atlanta. with Sarah Harris. <laughs> um, I'm so sad. It's not we fair. did. We had a lot of nice dinners. It's very romantic. Um, so one thing walks so kind of like... talking back. <laughs> it's true. Um, <laughs> snuggly snuggles. So um, Sarah Lynn, you had a great question about like the HR handbook, but I think that tags on to we have an HR handbook, but then we also have an HR like office procedures document and we do, you know, we probably should go back through and update it now, but having like a handbook and then a procedural document, I think is worth talking yes. about. Well, I think it's just what, you know, the, the need has shown itself that we need not only, you know, the culture side, but also the like nitty gritty procedures. And, um, again, I, I wish this not on you, but it's just been from necessity yeah. from realizing that it's needed. Um, yeah. yeah, but it's helpful. It's, oh, sorry. Go ahead. So, okay. what, my favorite thing about our pro office procedure stock is everything's documented. So, like when Tony was first doing her proposals this week, I was able mm -hmm. to pass that off to her. Same thing with Liz, like how to pull an order. I was able to pass these docs on. So, just do it once, document how you do it, and then your team onboarding is so much easier. Yeah, or, and to that oh, same yeah. point, like we had a jury duty pop up, and yeah. like that was a pretty recent addition to the handbook, but it was yes. really helpful to be like, for our the handbook, handbook yes. page seven. Yes. Like that was really great. So Here's Leslie has a good exactly. yeah. mm -hmm. um, Leslie has a good point. Let's talk about performance reviews. That's part of, you know, any HR yes. procedure, obviously. Absolutely. So, I don't know why I hate them so much, but I do. <laughs> you do. You hate them. I hate them. Even when I'm giving nothing but positive <laughs> feedback, I hate them. I don't know. Maybe yeah. next time we should roll camera and put yeah. wine in my hand. I'll be like, hey, it's time for a procedure Here's review. Your live Here's review. your live review. <laughs> <laughs> HR Any questions? HR no no. HR no no. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Everyone's like, no, no, not okay. Um, so, of course, what, what most large companies do, and my small company does, is it's more of a self-review and then a conversation. And obviously, if there's anything that needs to be brought up or talked about, it's the appropriate time to do it. But my feeling is, and I have learned from experience, that waiting for a review is a terrible plan. And so I am more likely to have a quick touch base with someone in the very moment that it's appropriate instead of waiting for a six month review. We have six month standardized yeah. set up reviews. So I think that's part of it is um, they, they, I don't, 
I do them and they're they're part of our they're part of your time, the employee's time to speak to me. But in my opinion, it would be really terrible if I waited for the six month review to have like a significant conversation with someone. So it's more, I wanna hear from you. And so we've, we have flipped it with intention that it is more of a self review and a self assessment. And of course, it's a great time to give kudos and to give, you know, one time I annually, it's a bonus conversation. And then the other time it's just a touch base. Yeah. And we, I think what Leslie is also looking to speak to is like, we took what was like sort of like an initial standard review and turned it into again, like a templated form Correct. that now as employees know what they need to fill out, what Sandra needs to fill out. So you come to the review and both parties, the expectations are clear and it's not yes. this awkward. The employees. Well, like, and that's, oh. I think what it was, it used to just be a review yeah. where I felt like I needed to write a speech to every employee about, <laughs> I don't know, lie. like <laughs> how I'm feeling about you today. Yeah. What I, yeah, I don't know. Um, but now it's very templated like everything yeah. we do. And it's like very clear, very templated shouldn't cause yeah. any anxiety. Exactly. But that's what takes <laughs> the anxiety out is yes. having that like system and right, having a plan. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Always have a plan. Um, definitely. Um, okay, and we have a comment, live performance review. Sounds like a good way to keep, uh, keep everyone in line. I'm well, just kidding. Be on your toes. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, does anybody here have any questions? HR like, sure. related? Any HR like, sort of, related questions? Um, one other point we didn't talk about, I mean, we talked a little bit about outsourcing, but I love your motto of like, Freelancers, consultants, interns, like mothers who are going back to work. Maybe we yes. talk a little bit about like where to tap on yep. for yep. extra yep. help. So we are um, we are three full time, three part time currently, right in our team, and not including you, not including me. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what to categorize <laughs> myself as. <laughs> Random mm -hmm. hours, if yep. anything. Um, I worked literally like worked like good work output until three in the morning one night this week and then like there's other days where I'm gone at three because the yeah. kids are doing XYZ like the schedule's not level it's crazy but it's my schedule yeah and um so I think I have no idea what I think I lost um, my we were sorry now, I lost my thought too. Um, <laughs> oh just hiring like, oh, like tapping so, into yes. sources that you might not expect so okay that's the reason that I gave the example of me working until three in the morning and then being gone at three in the afternoon some days was because not everyone works the same way. And while some people thrive on a group environment and being in person, and certainly interior design is a stuff-based business, we need to have the fabrics in front of us and the paint colors and all of that, really hard to have a completely remote team in my opinion. I also just love the team environment and atmosphere as you can see from our complete refusal to do trust falls and only drink together. <laughs> um, so Next time we're trust drinking and, and you're drunk. Drunk. That's exactly what I was thinking. Like falls. we're gonna drink and then we're gonna trust fall. <laughs> as long as we don't do live reviews. So <laughs> when we finish this <laughs> episode, that's what we'll be doing. I think Ronnie just said we should finish the episode. She's no, no, like, no. You've totally gone. No, off no. Us. I'm just saying we're doing trust yeah. falls teams. That's how we're gonna do trust falls. We'll do that live. We'll do them live. We'll do them Don't live. Worry. We'll do them live. Next design it's, it's, it's well, fine. Well, it's all performance review. I think we should be like you will tune in for that. <laughs> I feel like we should totally skip yeah, trust falls yeah, and go yeah, take yeah, a trapeze so. course. Oh god, that's cool. I did in that. the city. I did that in the DR. See, of course you did. Of course. Is there anything you haven't no, done? Have no. no. <laughs> Ryan, ask her. There's nothing she has done at all. Okay. While I'm okay, I'm bringing it back to HR. Everyone has different yeah. work styles. I totally respect that. I find that there is a wealth of um, mothers yeah. that are, have, are so overqualified and so amazingly talented, but no longer able to be at, on the 5 a.m. train and the 7 p.m. train doing the city commute, um, working out of their home while they have young children at home. So I have found the most incredible resources are often working mothers, right? Mothers who are looking to be really present with their children, but also get their toe back in the water with work. So I would greatly encourage you to allow for a lot of flexibility in your scheduling and in your like just a, yeah, and your yeah. acceptance of that because there is um, two of my very best employees are, I'm lucky to have, they're so overqualified, they're so beyond uh, they're so beyond our capabilities and it's because I think we are really close and really flexible and we get a lot of lot of value. So yeah, thank, thank you. you. 
So keeping yourself open and our newest employees, super flexible. We're trying, you know, we're still kind of figuring out where we're going with this. I think it is something that is worth trying. Yeah, absolutely. And not getting kind of stuck in like one structure. Yeah. Um, we have a good question. Any tips on integrating, sorry, hold on. New HR, policy. new HR policies to existing employees. And then I have another question after that. Oh yeah. So we are constantly evaluating and upgrading everything that we do from every facet of our business and our life. And it is a communicating constantly with the team saying, we are working on, we are working on, we are working on, and then we are rolling out, right? And when you're rolling out, it's putting a, it's putting really clear information in front of them and asking for their commitment to that new structure verbally, in person, talking it through, and then getting signatures. Um, nobody gets grandfathered into an old program. If we're redoing something, it's because we feel that the old program isn't good enough anymore. So there's no such thing as a grandfather clause with our clients, with our employees, with our trades. We, When we make an improvement and we put that effort in and we do a deep dive, we bring everyone up to speed to the newest and best level, always. Yeah, I awesome. think it, the, it's if the team knows the why behind it, yes. like don't go do something and then don't tell them because then they'll just start assuming. Well, and also it's communicate, communicate, communicate because if you're working on an HR initiative and it feels secretive in any way, shape, or form, you will alarm your staff and they, they might start job hunting. Like you don't know what their mm -hmm. personal situation has been in the past. If they see a bunch of closed door meetings, like you yeah, know, things yeah, yeah, start yeah, yeah. to look shady or shaky yeah. or unclear. People aren't stupid. Yeah, yeah, communicate, yeah. Communicate, communicate, yeah. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so we have an off-topic question, but that was what we love about design sips. You've got Sandra captive. So Ren Conrad said, uh, "Love you, ladies. Maybe off subject, but thoughts on hows worth it for legitimate leads, or do you prefer other options?" So my take on house, I will give it to you straight as I always do. Um, I would never pay to play with house. Um, we tried it a million years ago. We have taken the poll of the industry and I, I know um, I can count on one hand the number of people that find it successful and there are a few. I will tell you that the ones that find it successful have been with house since the very beginning and are so deeply entrenched and so huge on the platform that it's almost like incontrovertible. Like they are so a part of it that it just is natural for them to get those leads through house. Um, my feeling is an SEO keyworded blog post that puts you at the top results in Google is so much more valuable than house. Um, I also, you know, we're, we're put effort towards Pinterest and Instagram but at the end of the day, we don't own those platforms. We can't control those platforms. Obviously, Instagram is going through like a major tightening. Um, and so my feeling is SEO keyworded blog posts, personal face-to-face -face networking, those are the things that I can control and that I can put like my story out there in the best light possible. And that feels more important to me than has or any of them actually. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think I have another point that I feel like is sort of good on the HR topic is I think you do a great job of um, being really gracious with things like, um, you know, sort of considering maybe in the past if you weren't giving the full week between Christmas and New Year's, but you had a point in your career where you felt like that was yeah. worth doing. Well, I feel like I, I could finally afford to do yeah. that. I um, mean, you know, when you're a small business, every single day where you're not generating money, it, it was, I felt like Ebenezer Scrooge during the years where I was making someone take a vacation yeah. day to do it, but I had no other choice. Like yeah. it was, it was about affording, yeah. but man, the minute I could afford to do it. Yeah. That's the first and thing that, those do. little changes are such a wonderful way to reward your employees and show them that you're really like moving forward and scaling up and recognizing that, you know, like you said, there was a time when you couldn't do it, but now you can. And I think being conscious as a design firm owner mm -hmm. of like, when those switches can happen and knowing to like always be thinking ahead of like, you know, acknowledging that is really a, an important part of HR, you know? Absolutely. And I think, um, you know, we get, we get so busy being busy, keeping busy, making sure we stay busy that, um, 
that's a big part of what those reviews are for, is for your employees to reflect back to you what they need and what would make their job even better. And that's the number one question on our little self-review, is like, how can I make this your dream job? What would make it better? And, that, and I mean that when I say it. And, you know, yeah, you can write in a million dollars all you want, but like... Yeah. Would the week between Christmas and New Year's change your life? Great. Let's yeah. let's work towards that. You Absolutely. know, and as soon as we can do it, we will. Yeah. So that's huge. Um, and you just said um, something that triggered me, like about the performance reviews. Another thing I love is that we put together these templates and we have these, you know, really specific questions. But then when you're going through the review, if something just like is feeling awkward or if a question's like, oh, this feels repetitive, like I love that you are always refining, yes. always open to just always. changing. Um, so maybe talking about how HR can be open-minded while still being, you know, hitting on those. Like, yes. Really well, I think that's anything. So like we're obsessed with systematizing and documenting processes and not like reinventing the wheel, but we're also obsessed with iterating. So when something feels repetitive or didn't work well, we are always like, okay, so shift and then shift. Like it's just, it's being open to change. Yeah. Um, we ask that of our clients every day, right? And it's and yeah. being open to change internally. I think another thing you should talk about, especially since so many designers are a small business, the involvement of the whole team mm -hmm. in like strategy and stuff like that makes them understand like true like vacation between Christmas and New Year's like we need to hit our goals as a team rather than just it being on the owner to worry about that stuff it's more it makes it more of like a team effort so transparency right. yeah transparency and I think you're right like involving the whole team in the goals and where we sit with the goals and if we're gonna make our goals and I and as we're sitting here I like love the idea of setting a goal for sales and if we make it we're all off the week between New Year's and Christmas like now it's set yeah. for us it's done yeah but I could see a situation where it's it's iffy yeah you know like you're trying to finish out the year like yeah. <laughs> that is a invoicing yeah. Period, totally. because right, our big deadlines are Thanksgiving and Christmas, or you know, yeah, yeah. all of that. That time of year is very big. So, um, so being there, and that's part of why it was so hard to give that time off in the beginning, because that was always our biggest deadlines, and and we were still. We, we were still working on getting things done for the New Year's Eve party. You know, like yeah. it was literally still active. Um, but setting those kind of goals together and saying like, you know what would be cool if blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like if we did our strategic offsite, not in the woods in Michigan, but in Napa Valley. Like yeah. we could set goals. Incentives to We could set goals, us. check yeah. them together, and then execute. Who's with me? I love that. Napa, here we come, 2020. What do you think? Um, um, we'll be in Napa. Yeah, we'll be in Napa. <laughs> Live performance reviews. I can Napa. feel it. Trust balls, <laughs> trapeze. <laughs> Um, Eyes yeah. Let's uh, do it. Quick question: Do you feel like there's any overlap between managing employees and managing clients? Of course, there's overlap. <laughs> setting expectations, communications. Setting expectations, communications. It's it's the same principles, and it's the same with tr with your trades, right? Setting expectations, communicating. It's the same everywhere. I mean, it's the same with your relationships, the same with your children, it's the same. Yeah. It's Tone, same, expectations, same. Yes. like clarity, yes. communication. Communication. Yeah. Communication. Yeah. Exactly. So it's all overlap. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a big gig. It's a big part of what we do. The yeah. people. That's a people thing. Totally. Um, well, I'm always here to remind our viewers, like you can DM us your questions, email us. Um, hi, Nicole, who joined at the end. Love Cheers, you. Baby. Cheers, baby girl. Um, and I'm reminding everyone that it's IDS, not IBS, that you're looking <laughs> for in your future. <laughs> the goal is definitely not IBS. <laughs> All right, good. Ryan, you crack me up. Okay, <laughs> I am Sandra Fung. This has been Design Sips, weird as it may have been. And you can find more of our wacky and I hope lovable things at houseoffunk.com and check out the trade tab. Any of you designers who want more info on the business side of interior design. Cheers. Cheers. See you Cheers. soon. This one's good. And somehow.